Okay, so I've had a lot of physical illnesses and a lot of experience with physical illness. And I think Dr. Hawkins uh, DVDs and I'll plug his thing um, at the moment on veritaspub.com. Um, for $20 a month, you can watch all his videos, unlimited binge watching. Uh, but, you know, for me, that, that that that's not addictive. That's like, how do you free yourself from all illusions? So it's much better than, you know, the latest Netflix horror, horror TV series, in my view, uh, unless that's what your thing is. But, um, okay, so it's, it's a thing of like, so the commitment is to be free. Um, and anything that one is identified with, for example, physical pain in the body, um, you know, it could be um, uh, neuropathy, um, pain, tiredness, exhaustion, doesn't really matter. It's all, they're all objects. So, but they usually, I mean, maybe I won't spend too much time talking about the karmic meaning of them um, or what the Course talks about, the guilt that holds these things in place. I won't talk about that, let's make it simple. So the commitment is to be free and anything that becomes identified and gives the experience of limitation needs to be worked on to be transcended. There's various things, there's cancelling a belief, there's observing, um, there's the Course in Miracles, there's various ways to release um, those things that seem to be appearing in the infinite and seem to get one confused that one is being limited by them or that these objects have the power to, to limit your infinite experience. So, but talking on a practice, I mean, I have lots of practical experience with pain, kidney failure, gout, and not being able to walk, walking sticks, uh, asthma, not being able to breathe, but lots of experience with all that stuff. Um, so um, when the pain comes, there's, there's several ways to deal with it. So I'll go through it. So pain is, so one way is to use the observer, and the observer does work if you're able to do it. Um, so uh, so as the pain comes in, rather than be hooked into the pain, you ask what's observing the pain. You know, what's, what's, what's observing the pain? Le okay, so some of the questions you'd want to be listening to if you were playing this YouTube video is like, okay, 10 minutes ago there was no pain, and now there's pain. So the pain wasn't here 10 minutes ago. There was just uh, peace and stillness. And now suddenly, I don't know, someone's trod on your foot. And there's the experience of pain. It's like, I'm in pain. But that are you in pain? Because um, that which was observing without pain 10 minutes ago was just observing without the experience of pain. And so there's the experience of pain now. So really, the pain is something that can come and go. But there's something that observes pain come and go. So in that, that suddenly makes you realize because you're now because you're hooked into the pain, you forgot that there's a witnesser of the pain. Because if the, if there was ever the experience of pain not being here, then then when the pain comes, it's like a cloud. If you can observe a blue sky and a cloud comes along, it doesn't suddenly mean you're the cloud. You're still the observer of the cloud because you can observe blue skies and clouds coming and going. So you can't be the pain. So that's one way is just to know that it's a passing object it's not what you are the observer is here and that breaks the belief that pain is real and you go oh yeah there is an observer it was it's, it's observing it now that it's here until you observe it when it's gone and as you go deeper as you it's a spiritual awakening as you awaken to the observer of pain suddenly the pain disappears like the juice is cut off uh, and i've had that uh, a few times it's very miraculous it's just it's just that it seems to be a loud noise that seems to attract identification but once you go to that, once you break the belief and you recognize, oh, there is an observer of pain that's not in pain, and you connect to that, then the pain suddenly disappears like a, like the illusion that it really is, if you're able to do that. Now, sometimes you might not be able to do that. The second tool with pain is what it, what, what I'd call non-resistance, uh, not trying to fight the pain, just allowing the pain without thought. So the other way is to go... It's like there's a natural tendency for the ego to not want the pain to be there and to say, oh, my goodness, I wish it wasn't here. Uh, I wish I could just make it go away. Oh, I don't like it. I resent this pain. Oh, it's so horrible. Poor me, poor me, poor me. So that's what you call resisting the pain in, 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 in the head. So you just want to cut off. You want to develop the 
opposite attitude, let's call it the spiritual warrior, the courageous spiritual warrior, the opposite attitude of what the ego does. The ego goes like starts moaning about pain, like, please make it go away. What can I do to mag make it magically escape? So the opposite of that is like, uh, f forget thinking and just allow the pain 100% without resistance. So just uh, allow what is to be without any uh, thinking or identification with thought. And it's, it's like if there's any sort of, um, if, the, uh, if there's any kind of unconscious wanting to repress it, just unhook that, just let it be 100% here. And so you, you're allowing it with 100% uh, allowing, with no resistance, no mentalization, not wanting it, nothing within your being, within your unconscious that is refusing it. But just like, in that way, um, it's like 100% surrender non-verbally. Yeah, and it's a it's a like a mechanism you you think. And um, I just share um, what was the one? Yes, that was the one where uh, I've had many experiences. I mean, miraculous experiences. One of them I've shared is a fun one. Was when I was quite ill, but I was getting into Doctor Hawkins a lot. So I was kind of in between extreme ego and extreme spiritual practice. And um, the the doc the doctor had said um, to me. Uh, don't eat bananas because I was a, I'm a food, I was a food addict. I'm a food addict. Don't eat bananas; you'll get a heart attack. You've got kidney failure now. So as soon as they let me out, I, I ate a huge bag of bananas. Uh, if you have to be an addict to understand why I did that, uh, and uh, so I ate the bananas. But they had taken a blood test of me uh, uh, after I ate the bananas. Uh, I just had to come in for a blood test for some reason, and then. I went out and they phoned me up from accident and emergency in the hospital saying you're about to have a heart attack. You need to come straight into accident and emergency for emergency treatment. You know, like you're going to die. Your potassium levels uh, have skyrocketed. So I was really resentful that I had to go in for emergency treatment. But I went in and, um, you know, like, uh, I, I'm tr you know, I mean, people think I'm exaggerating, but the needle, the, the needle that they give you if you're about to have a heart attack it's like it's not like those tiny piddly little needles for taking uh, blood tests. It's like a needle that goes all the way up your arm and straight up 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 your arm towards your heart. And it's a massive fat needle that goes all the way up your arm to get as close to your heart as possible by injecting it in your arm. I mean, I looked at this huge, like more like a spear than a needle, uh, to that they were going to try and go. Okay, you're going to just bust up all my veins and just stick this long needle somewhere. It's not going to go anywhere near my, I can't fit that into all my veins, all the way up to my heart. Anyway, so I saw that thing that they were going to plunge into me. Um, and I said to myself, well, don't resist. Uh, when when the needle's going in, just don't resist the pain. Just welcome the pain 100%, no matter how bad it is. So it's like, and so I did. You know, and I was willing to experience that needle without any resistance as it goes all the way up my arm towards my heart. It was massive. It was horrific. So I was willing to do that. And they, they put the need, start putting the needle in. I, just, I, I wasn't resisting. I was just trying to feel, allow the pain 100% to experience it, no matter how bad it was. And as the pain was going in, I went into like a state of bliss and I started to lose consciousness. And as I started to lose consciousness, I was, I was like leaving the world into this state of absolute sublime bliss. Uh, and then and then they did this thing of like slapping, sort of slapping me and thinking I was having, um, they thought I was having a diabetic fit, uh, faint. I'm not diabetic. And so they said like, wake up, wake up. And they started shaking me and said, they were going like, get a sugary drink for him. He must be diabetic. So, uh, which is quite hilarious as a food addict. So, they, but you know, it's those type of things, which I sometimes share, like once you're going off into the bliss, you're quite happy to leave the body forever. Uh, you don't actually want to come back. You know, people shaking you and trying to bring you back into this world. It's like, it was much nicer over there. Why are you pulling me back down, back down here? But um, that's just my story. So one, it, it, it's worth it's worth practicing the observer or not resisting the pain in any way. It takes practice. Uh, so that's the second one. If you can't do the observer, if you can't do allowing it without resistance, then you can do um, cancelling beliefs. I cancel my belief in pain in my skin. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Or you can do um, or other other course, course lessons. Now, if you've done that, let's say you're doing the lessons or the observer or um, the lessons observer are just allowing, 
and it goes away what about if you feel like you should stop now and not carry on should you stop now and not carry on well it's sort of like uh, you see the commitment if you're given your life to be enlightened to surrender absolutely everything to god until the job's done then that should be the commitment now it's an intuitive decision um with some illnesses i guess the illnesses which are chronic which tend to come back in waves you're just not going to get rid of cute ones you can get rid of very quickly but the chronic ones even if you do a lot of work they're probably going to come back for another bout a bit later on it's like heavy karma so you're not going to get rid of it you just take out bouts of it and it gets less and less and then finally disappears in my chronic illnesses took three to five years to disappear out but um yeah no with those ones i would once you've cleared about i would um it's just intuitive if you feel it's still a, there's a lot of stuff under the hood with a chronic illness then i would um to the extent you might be like doing the cancelling beliefs three times a day on the illness or and also every time you feel it slightly come back clear it out asap so in that way you'll keep on top of it otherwise if you just clear it out and not do any work around it you know that like cancelling beliefs is probably quite useful even if you're not feeling it how much should you cancel your belief well it depends how heavy the illness is i'd say for a very heavy illness you might be doing 10 minutes of cancelling three times a day because you know there's more stuff in there so you just uh, you're just preempting the work before it happens again okay i'll stop that